Hello, this is the next video in a playlist that I'm calling Hypothesis Testing. And this is a little three-part mini-series where we're going to do an illustration of a two-sided, uniformly most powerful test. This is part one of three. Here we're going to let Xi be a shifted exponential distribution. We're going to have a sample size n, b is known, and x is greater than a. So let's find a uniformly most powerful test for this two-sided test. Is A equal to A naught or is A not equal to A naught? And the joint density is this, so it's the product of the individual densities. And let's consider cases first. So let's let A1 not equal to A0. And let's test this simple versus simple hypothesis test. Now, by the name in Pearson Lemon, the most powerful test is this, where the likelihood ratio is above some constant k. We reject, and otherwise we do not reject. And this is our test function, where the constant k is determined by this equation here. Alpha is equal to the expected value of our test function under the null hypothesis that, you know, a is a naught. And since this is... Uh, a discrete random variable, it's the value times the probability of a happening, value times the probability of a happening. So really it's just that probability. And then we can find a k such that it equals alpha. So first let's assume that a1 is greater than a0. And then the likelihood becomes this. So we just take this function put it on the top, but wherever there's an A, we put in an A1. And then on the bottom, this is under the null hypothesis, we just we have to put in A0 or A0 here. Now, these indicator functions are, it's either a 1 if this condition's met or 0 otherwise. It's a 1 if this condition's met and it's a 0 otherwise. Now, this can be thought of as this, I mean, this is our test function. So our likelihood, which is this, um, reduces. So like the, the B's cancel each other. This we can move up. We get some XI's uh, canceling. And we're left over with this, you know, times these indicator functions. And so this is it. This is the most powerful test for simple versus simple when A1 is greater than A0. So now let's graph this. And it looks like this. So this is the likelihood value. And this is, uh, it's a function of, of the minimum order statistic, x1. And so this axis is x1. So when the minimum becomes, is between a0 and a1, this is 0, right? Because this, this function is 1, but this is 0 because the minimum hasn't reached a1 yet. And then when it reaches A1, then it becomes whatever this likelihood is equal to. So to be greater than some K is equivalent to X1 being greater than some constant. So like if K is here, well, of course the constant becomes, you know, A1. But if we have what's called a side condition, which is this, then this C is not a one, it's some, you know, value here. So that means that our test function, the likelihood being greater than some constant is really equal to the minimum order statistic being greater than some value C, some constant C and, and it's zero otherwise. So we reject if the minimum is greater than C and do not reject. Now, where this, the constant C is determined by this equation, you know, it's the expected value of our test function at the null, and we set it equal to alpha. And so here we solve that for C. So since we're dealing with probability in an order statistic, then we need the density of the order statistic. And since this is one side of probability, we, the CDF would be helpful also. So we're not going to drive these in this video. <clears throat> this would be the density of the first order statistic, which is this. And then you can integrate that from 
a to a value x and then we come up with the the CDF function which is this so now to solve for C you know we set alpha equal to this probability but this you know if we take one minus it then it becomes a CDF so one minus this the ones cancel and we're left with just the E and we're plugging in that constant right here right now we take this set it it's equal to alpha we can solve for C and we get this value here and so this is our cutoff. So the uniformly most, not uniformly, the most powerful test. It's not uniform because it's simple versus simple. So the most powerful test is that we reject when our the minimum order statistic is greater than this constant, and we do not reject otherwise. But notice there's no X or A1 in here. So the arbitrarily chosen A1 doesn't impact this rejection region. So it's actually uniformly most powerful for this hypothesis, that A is equal to A1 versus A is really greater than A1. Okay, and the double slash means we've proved something that we're going to use later. You know, the, the square box means the, the proof of the problem's done. So here, let's assume part two, that A1 is less than A. So then our test function, the uniform, uh, the name and Pearson lemma says that we, re we reject when the likelihood is greater than some constant k and we do not reject otherwise. Now, if we plot this, remembering that A1 is bigger than, A0 is bigger than A1, and so when we plot this, it actually goes down. So when we're between A1 and A0, this is undefined, so it's essentially making this blow up to infinity, or we define it that way. Then when any time we're after A0, then it's these are both 1, so we just get the likelihood value. But since this is a, a decreasing function, it's really non-increasing, but my mindset still thinks of it as decreasing. And to, for this likelihood to be greater than some k, that's equivalent to, um, the, you know, this being less than or equal to some value. And, and the trick is when it's decreasing in the likelihood, if we, if we take the negative of, the, of our uh, statistic, then it, then it switches it to increasing. And then since that... Is in you know the likelihood function is increasing in a negative uh, the minimum order statistic then when that is greater than some constant c we reject but we usually multiply that to the other side and then we switch the inequality and I guess technically that this should be c prime you know it's a different constant but it's a constant so um, yeah, I should have put a tick or something there, but I didn't. So this is our this is our test function, and it's the most powerful test function, right? For this simple versus simple hypothesis test. So now let's solve for c. So alpha is equal to the expected value of this test function, which is really just this probability, and that is a CDF, which we solve for up here. So we plug in the critical value right there, right? Now we put this as equal to alpha, we can solve for C, and we get C is equal to this value here. Now they look very similar, but here there's a 1 minus alpha, and here it's just alpha. Now, thus the most powerful test function is this, where the minimum order statistic is less than this constant, right? It's less than that constant, and we derive the constant. But notice there's no A1 anywhere. So the rejection region is actually independent of the arbitrarily shown A1, the A1 that we picked, you know, and when we assume this less than, than A. So this ends up being what's called a uniformly most powerful test for this test function. A is equal to A0 versus A is less than A0. Now, since both tells are uniformly most powerful, we we combine them. So both cases are independent of the arbitrarily chosen A1. Therefore, the uniformly most powerful test for A equal to A0 versus A not equal to A0 
at size alpha is this test function where the, if the minimum order statistic is less than this constant or the minimum order statistic is greater than this constant we reject and do not otherwise now one note here uh, since we want this to be an alpha test and there's two it's a right tail and a left tail in order for this to be an alpha size test we have to uh, divide alpha by two so that way um, when it approaches you know any when you know a1 the value in the rejection region approaches you know a naught you know and actually from both sides then it limits to alpha and the only way that to happen is if we conduct each of these at the alpha over two level okay well that's all i have for this test um, there's two more little videos in this little mini series within the playlist of hypothesis testing so i hope you enjoyed this i sure did please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye